Hey everyone, it's me, Nita, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be making, or actually tonight, I'm going to be making some tie-dye shirts. So I just got my first order for a tie-dye shirt. It's um, something new that I just added to my shop just a few days ago, and I already got my first sale on it. So basically it's going to be a Halloween-themed um, tie-dye shirt that's going to have a spiral design on it, and it's going to have some HTV or heat transfer vinyl on it that's going to say the word monster. I'm going to be showing you guys step-by-step -step on how I make my tie-dye shirts that I sell in my Etsy shop. So let's go ahead. I'm going to show you what materials I'll be using tonight. Okay, so one of the main things that I use is their jersey cotton shirts. So these shirts are super soft, they're stretchy, my go-to, and they're really easy to find. I get these at Michael's if I don't have any shirts in stock, but most of the time I order my shirts in bulk off of Jiffy shirts. Okay, so the type of dye that I'll be using is Rit Dye. So far I really like this dye. I only use a little bit of the product and it seems to go a long way. So I, I'm so far I'm really impressed with this brand. So I'm going to be using the colors Black, Tangerine, and Violet. I wanted my tie-dye spiral design to have a Halloween theme, so I thought that these three colors would look perfect for our Halloween shirt. So I'll be using these three colors. I'm also going to be using a fork to help make the spiral design. And I'm also going to be using some spray bottles. I'm using three because I am using three different colors. However many colors your tie-dye shirt is, you're going to want the same amount of bottles because you're going to want to use each color in a different bottle. And lastly, I'm going to be using some rubber bands to help keep my shirt in place to help give it that tie-dye look. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my white t-shirt and I'm gonna go get it wet really fast at my sink. So let's go ahead and let's head over to my sink. I wanna completely saturate the shirt, but I don't want the shirt to be dripping wet. So I am going to drain out the shirt once it's completely wet. Okay, so I have my shirt completely wet. Now I'm gonna take it back over to um, my table. Okay, so I have my shirt completely wet. I tried to make sure to get all the extra water out of the shirt by wringing it out, so make sure you do that. So now the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to use my fork and I'm going to use it to help me make a spiral on the shirt. So I'm gonna start my spiral in the middle of the shirt. You can start it wherever you want. You can start it in the armpit, in the shoulder, um, on the bottom, or you can do even two spirals if you want. For me, tonight, I'm doing one spiral and I'm gonna do it in the middle of the chest. So your spiral should kind of look like a cinnamon roll almost, or that's what it reminds me of. So I'm going to use three rubber bands and that I'll be using to tie around this t-shirt. So I kind of want to make it have like pizza slices, so I'm going to make sure when I'm putting my rubber bands around this t-shirt that I'm trying to make like a pizza slice design. Okay, so there is my shirt. It's all tied up and ready to go. So now I'm gonna take this over to my sink where there's a little rack there. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bottles and I'm going to fill each bottle with dye. So for each of the dyes, I'm going to take the dye and do three capfuls of the color into, into each bottle.
take each bottle and fill it up with the hottest water. So I'm turning my water faucet all the way to the hottest temperature. So as you guys can see, my t-shirt is in the shape in the shape of a circle and I have my rubber bands tied around the t-shirt so it made like little pizza slices. Each slice I'm going to use one color. So I'm going to use orange for one, black, purple, and then I'll start the pattern again using orange, black, purple. First color I'm starting with orange and I'm going to make sure and try and saturate this triangle as much as I can. here. Okay, we're going to go back to orange. Back to purple. Back to black. Okay, so now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same colors for the same triangle. Okay, so as you guys can see, there is my shirt. I totally forgot to mention, we'll need some saran wrap. Totally forgot to mention that. But now I'm gonna take my saran wrap. And I suck at using saran wrap, but I'm gonna take my saran wrap and wrap the shirt. So the shirt's gonna be completely wrapped in the saran wrap. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this shirt as it's still wrapped in the saran wrap and I'm gonna put it in the microwave for two minutes. Again, I'm gonna put this in the microwave. I know that sounds weird, but I'm gonna put it in the microwave and microwave it for two minutes. Okay guys, so I just took the shirt out of the microwave. I'll show you what it looks like. So I'm just gonna leave it like this, all wrapped up and everything, and I'm gonna let it sit. So I've seen a lot of videos, and each video that I've seen has talked about the, the amount of time you're gonna let the dye sit on the shirt. So what I did is I tested out different methods. So I tried out the method of just letting it sit for 30 minutes and then throwing it in the washer in cold water. Um, and then I did the method of letting it sit for 12 hours and then letting it sit for 24 hours. So for the 30 minutes, the color did not stick for very long. I noticed a dramatic increase of the dye sticking to the shirt more when I let it sit for 12 hours. I noticed a slight difference by letting it sit for a full 24 hours, but honestly, I couldn't really tell a difference between letting it sit for 12 hours versus letting it sit for 24 hours. 
Um, so I'm going to let this shirt actually sit for 12 hours. So I'm going to go film another video right now. And I will see you guys tomorrow morning. And then we'll check out how this shirt turned out. Hopefully this shirt turned out good because the customer is going to be picking it up tomorrow. So I need to have it done by tomorrow. All right, guys. So it's the next day. Uh, the shirt has been sitting for well over 12 hours, probably around like 14 to 15 hours now. So I'm going to rinse out the shirt with some really cold water and then I'm going to wash it really quick too in some really cold water and then dry it. And then I'm going to put the HTV on once it's completely dry. So let's go ahead and let's rinse out this shirt and kind of see what it looks like so far. Okay. Let's go ahead and open her up. So it's been sitting for about 14 hours now. Um, I'm hoping this came out perfect because I don't want to have to remake it. I'm going to make sure my water is really, really ice, ice cold. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse the shirt out until I don't see any more uh, color in the water. I'm going to make sure the water is clear before I throw it in the washing machine. Kind of open her up, and this is what it looks like so far. It looks really, really good. I love it. Now, once I wash it, it is going to lose a lot of the vibrant color to it, but for the most part, the color will stick to the shirt. Also, when you throw this in the washing machine, you want to make sure that this is the only item in the washing machine because you don't want this color to bleed onto anything else. So. You're washing this completely by itself. Okay, so right now I have the shirt drying in the dryer. Um, so far, just from looking at the shirt, it looks perfect. I love how it turned out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and have my Cricut start cutting out the vinyl that I'm gonna be using for this shirt. I'm using a vinyl design that says Momster on it because it's Halloween themed. Um, I'm gonna have my machine cut that, cut that out. I'm gonna weed it out. And hopefully by the time I'm done with that, the shirt will be ready to go. So here is the shirt. I just pulled it out of the dryer. It's a little wrinkly, so I definitely need to iron it before I package it up. But it came out really good. I love the purples. I love how the black turned out. It didn't turn out too dark, but just right. And the orange really pops out. I love it. And the spiral, it looks super cool. Okay, so now all I have to do is heat press that monster design on, and then I'm officially done with that shirt, and that's only gonna take like a minute to do.
is the final product of the shirt. I think literally everything about this shirt came out perfect. The spiral came out perfect. The color of the shirt came out perfect. And I really do just love this mobster design. If you actually like this shirt, I have this shirt up on my Etsy for 15% off if you want to go snag it. Just make sure to use the code Nita and Thread and you'll get a 15% off coupon. All right, everyone, I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a ton of fun making this shirt and making this video, so I hope you enjoyed it as well. I am going to be making a bunch of different other tie-dye things, like sweatshirts and maybe some jumpsuits. I don't know yet, but I'm, I for sure will be making a lot more tie-dye items. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows to share with other people. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. I'm trying to reach 350 subscribers um, this October. So if you can and you wanna help me out, make sure to subscribe. And if you don't wanna miss any of my videos, make sure to hit that notification bell too because I do upload regularly so you don't wanna miss anything. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.